Welcome to Flip It Furniture. My name is Amy and today we're making over this nine drawer French Provencial dresser. I got this dresser from the thrift store. I immediately fell in love with it. The second I saw it, I knew it had to be my next project. I started by taking off all the hardware and then I used a TSP cleaner and I washed the whole entire piece down. Then I rinsed it with a rag with water just to make sure there was no cleaner residue left on the piece. Now I'm using a surface prep pad on my mouse sander. I thought that was pretty cool that they had those. I never knew they had them before. So I have one of these and it's a medium grit and I'm just sanding the top of this because there's a lot of gouges and scratches. So I'm just gonna smooth out this surface. And then I decided that the piece is pretty shiny and smooth, so why not move down the piece and just give it a quick scuff sanding? There were some scratches that I couldn't smooth out with the sander, so I'm using the all-purpose putty from Bondo just to fill them in. Now, as I'm outside, I realize that there is a serious odor on this piece. I haven't even brought it in my house yet, and I can smell, so I'm not sure exactly what it is. Maybe it's just old, um, or I hate to say this, but it could be a smoker smell. So I'm using the spray can of shellac, and I am spraying every single inch of this piece, including the backboard, the insides, just everywhere. It sounds tedious to spray every inch of the piece, but if you do, it works and it will smell like brand new. My Bondo is dry, so I'm sanding it smooth. Now I wanna use a primer and this was the only one I could find. I wanted to use either white or gray. It didn't doesn't really matter, but this turbo spray can was the only one I can find. And it comes out like a fire hose, so I don't recommend it. If you could find a regular spray can, that I highly recommend. I'm using Country Chic paint for this, and I'm using the color Opulence. Right now, I'm gonna paint the insides of the drawers, and I'm just doing a base coat here. I'm, to be honest, I'm really not sure which direction I'm going. So I kind of just played around all night with my first coat and I tried a few things out. <laughs> this is what I ended up with. This is the next day. So I did a few color combinations and I really just took my time to see exactly how I wanted this piece to look. Don't be afraid of paint. It's just paint. You can always paint over it. So now I have an idea. I even asked some of my furniture flipping YouTuber friends um, and everybody kind of really liked the purple and so did I. So I'm going in with a full base coat of Wisteria by Country Chic, just so that I can start this over fresh. This piece gives me really like grand vibes. I feel like it is just super elegant and beautiful. So I'm thinking the combination of the purples will be really beautiful. So I wanna show you here exactly how I'm going to lay on my second coat, which will be the permanent coat. I'm going to outline each drawer and that little middle piece and the side pieces with wisteria. And while my wisteria is wet, I'm taking the color Opulence and a little crafting brush and I'm painting in all the creases. Now I grab my brush with the wisteria on it and I just lightly go over the opulence just to blend it out a little bit. Then I go back in with my opulence and my artist brush 
and I just do the creases around the drawers. And then back with my wisteria again, and I'm just blending it out. And I'm using my water mister actually a lot. Um, I do find that when I'm using Country Chic paint, it does dry pretty fast. So my water mister is really helpful with when blending. The goal is to keep your paint wet so that you can move it around and you can mix the colors. And for my third paint color, I'm using Crinoline by Country Chic. And I'm gonna use this on the centers of all the drawers and that middle cabinet. So I'm using three brushes, my artist brush, and then a brush for crinoline and a brush for wisteria. This is the pattern that I'm gonna use throughout the entire dresser. All of the drawer fronts are going to be, I'm gonna do them in the exact same way. So as I did this first one, I'm doing the second and then I'll go down to the third and then to the other side. I sped this video up a little bit right now because I'm doing the same exact thing on the second drawer, but in case anybody wants to see it again, I will just show you in a sped up motion. So for this middle cabinet cover, I just love all the little ornate details, but I am, I put some wisteria on it and while the wisteria is still wet, I'm outlining it with opulence. And this is just to make that shadow effect. It gives the piece a little bit more interest than just having one color. I love to have a variation of colors when they're in the same color family because it looks like shading gives the eye just a little bit more to look at. Um, I think it adds just a little bit more interest in your piece also. Now I'm coming back with my wisteria brush just to blend it nice and smooth. I really love the crinoline with the wisteria. Oh, it's just super pretty.
Now to take these details just a little step further, we're gonna use the Metallic Cream by Country Chic, and this is in Silver Bullet. Now I'm gonna go around all those details that I've just painted and blended, and you're gonna, I'm just doing a really light coat over it, so you can still see the color of the paint underneath. really like this metallic cream if you're looking for an iridescence you know you could add another coat if you want it to be really really silver but if you just want it to look iridescent you can just do one light coat so you have the option to do it both ways and it is definitely more metallic than iridescent but there's something iridescent about it over the purple it sort of looks like you could see the purples coming through it's just beautiful Now I wanna go back into these drawers and repaint over the opulence. I'm just gonna paint with the wisteria. The center, though, where the cabinet is, I'm gonna leave that in the color opulence. For the top, I have gone back and forth and back and forth trying to decide what I was gonna do with the top. And I've decided we're gonna do two coats of Pebble Beach. It's a really light gray. Gray pairs really, really nice with purple. But I'm not gonna stop there. This is just the base coat. I wanna do a really heavy wash over the gray. So the gray will give it a little bit of dimension. I love, when I'm doing a wash, I love to use on cool colors, a gray base. If I'm using warm colors, I'll go with like a brown base. So those that neutral color underneath doesn't show too much if I'm doing a heavy wash, but it gives it that depth and dimension. So here we are with the crinoline again, and I'm gonna make my wash. I didn't realize that I was a little out of the camera view, but I just poured some of that crinoline in my cup and I'm adding some water. When I do realize that it might not have been in the shot or you can't see, I do come up just to show you the consistency. As you can see, it's pretty watery and I do that because I can always add more coats. I end up adding a total of three coats of wash. So I follow this process three times. To achieve the look I'm going for, I have to work in rows. So I do one row and then I need to wipe it back. And I'm not wiping it back a lot. I'm leaving a lot on there because I want the white to really stand out. The white is gonna be the showstopper on the top, but that um, pebble beach underneath is gonna give it just a variation of colors. And we work in rows because when you wipe it back, you're leaving not streaks, you know, streaks sounds like a word we don't like in painting, but they are almost like um, gentle, soft streaks, but it gives it this really cool effect. And when you're going for this effect, make sure that you have a really soft rag. You could use a microfiber rag, a lint-free rag, just make sure that it's a really soft surface so that you get a softness on your piece. Because if you're using, say, a paper towel, it's gonna look like you used a paper towel. You'll have, it'll look rough and, um, so whatever, whatever you're using is whatever you're gonna see basically. It's just a tip to keep in mind when you're doing your wash. You can definitely change the look of your wash with whichever rag you use. So at this point it doesn't look that impressive but I do it two more times waiting for it to dry fully dry about an hour in between coats. By that third coat it's it's really pretty. <laughs> Now I wanna start sealing my piece. So I'm using Country Chic's clear coat. 
and for you want to make sure that you stir any clear coat you're using don't shake it or you'll have bubbles but stir it so that anything on the bottom gets stirred up and you know all the sealing properties are stirred and they're working really good when you put your sealer on today I'm using a sponge brush and that's because there's so many creases and details on this piece that I just want to make sure I have a smooth finish continue sealing the bottom half of this piece with my sponge brush and my clear coat. For the top, we're gonna use something else. Now I am spray painting with this Rust-Oleum's metallic finish, all the hardware. I love this metallic finish. It's not like a silver, polished silver finish. It's like that really mirrored silver finish. I like the mirrored. Sometimes I'll just like that mirrored a little bit better. I'm sealing the hardware with Country Chic's Tough Coat. I'm taking that Tough Coat, pouring it into a little container, and that is what I'm gonna use to seal the top of this. I have to say, Country Chic's Tough Coat is one of my favorite sealers of all time. It has a scratch resistant finish, which makes for like this little hard shell over your piece. You've never had to worry about streaks with it. I know that that can be an issue with top coats, but I don't really have that issue with this one. Maybe it's the sponge, but I, it's never been an issue and it always comes out so beautiful. But I'll also say when you do a wash and you have those variations of colors, um, any top coat that's going on your piece, even if you did have streaks, it doesn't really show because that wash is super forgiving. I did my dining room table with this tough coat and it's still, it's a couple months later and we've had parties and football games and things like that and it has still held up just as it did the day I put the tough coat on. So I really love it. I'm putting two coats of the tough coat on this and that's really all you need. Might add a third one, but two, so far so good. And I just go around and I do the little beveled edge last. And here's a reminder of what it looked like before and here it is today. Look at that top. I just love the top. I love this look for the tops. When you can't figure out what to do with the top, I recommend this. <laughs> Here you can subtly see all those variations of colors. And there's the inside with the opulence and the wisteria on the drawer fronts. You guys, I just love this piece. I, don't, I love it. I absolutely love it. I wish I could put it in my daughter's room, but she already has one. <laughs> so I, this will be up for sale pretty soon. I would love to know what you all think. Let me know down in the comments if you can. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next week.